So, yeah, let's start, guys. So, welcome to online presentation of paint for it techniques. Uh, I'm going to start by saying a few words about me, because some of you know me, some of you don't. And uh, my name is Laura Laidali. I am a, a therapist, artist, and teacher, a writer. I do a lot of different things. But we're, what we're going to focus on today is uh, creativity. So creativity is something that all of us uh, need to do in order to feel uh, passion in life, in order to feel fulfilled, in order to be able to express ourselves. Uh, creativity is not just about painting or singing or making music, playing instruments. It is about expressing yourselves. And sometimes um, people find it hard to step into creativity because they think you need to have some specific skills in order to uh, be an artist. And you don't. We are all artists of our lives. We are all creators of our lives and we all need to express ourselves. So there's a lot of different ways to express yourself. Uh, it doesn't have to be artistic. Uh, it can be how you dress, it can be uh, how you talk, it can be the, the things that you, uh, you do in life to, that make you happy. That's your self-expression. Uh, what I have found, uh, it was back in 2012, uh, I have found a method called Vedic Art, as you can see right here. This is my, um, this is one of my businesses, Vedic Art Ireland, and and I found this method back in 2012. This is a method that comes from Sweden, and it's about self development through art. And I have to tell you that before uh, I joined the course, the Vedic Art courses, I have not painted ever. Like maybe when I was a child, I painted a little bit, you know, some stick figures at school. But everybody said it was just, uh, you know, it wasn't good enough and I just kind of gave it up. So when I found Vedic Art, uh, I realized that I can express myself through the use of art without actually having any skills. So Vedic Art uh, is something that um, became a part of my life and something I teach people. Uh, and throughout my artistic journey, I found different methods to work with, uh, different tools and different things that I've, I've, I've been drawn to throughout uh, throughout those eight years already, eight years. Um, and uh, I think it was about a year and a half ago that I have found paint pouring. Um, and paint pouring is uh, fun and easy in a way that you don't need to use any paint brushes. Uh, and for a lot of people, the blockage to uh, creating art is thinking that you have to know how to draw or how to uh, create specific uh, objects or faces or landscapes. So by removing the, the brush, the paintbrush, out of the equation, it becomes easier for people to, uh, to do something artsy, you know, to be creative, to play with paints. And, and paint pouring is actually about just playing with paints. Uh, I'm sure that you have seen a lot of different uh, videos on YouTube. If you're interested in paint pouring, there's tons of videos on, um, on YouTube. Um, I have posted a couple of videos myself as well. Um, but sometimes it's easier if somebody just shows you step by step uh, how to do this. Like it is a very, very easy uh, way to be creative, very easy way to be an artist. Um, but it took me a while to find, uh, to find different ways of dealing with the material, of uh, mixing the materials, mixing the supplies and, and, uh, and media to make sure that it flows because paint pouring is all about the flow. Um, and the thing that I have found, like self-development is a big part of my life and it's something that I teach people. Uh, I found that paint pouring can be a great way of learning to let go. And this is something that we all need to learn. Um, we are very attached to controlling our lives and controlling the outcome. Um, and then br that brings in a lot of tension into people's lives, uh, trying to make sure that everything goes right, that you know we, uh, think of all of the steps to make sure everything happens the way it's supposed to happen and then at the end What if it doesn't happen the way we uh, we thought it was going to happen? Um, we feel like we failed we feel uh, sad. We feel resentful. We feel uh, bad about ourselves. So um, letting go is about uh, Being present in what you're doing doing your best but uh, letting go of the results and it's something that we all can use in life. And I have found that paint pouring is a great way to learn to let go. Because with paint pouring, uh, there is very limited amount of control we have over what we're doing. 
So you can choose the canvas that you can use, the size of the canvas. It doesn't have to be a canvas, like I've done paint pouring on clay and on different uh, objects, like on mirrors and vases and stuff. Uh, but canvas is like the easiest way to do it because it's flat, it's easy to manipulate. So you can choose, um, you can choose the surface that you want to work on. You can choose the colors that you want to work with. Uh, you can mix the colors to make sure that they are uh, flowing properly. Um, and then there's a couple of techniques that I'm going to show you in a few minutes uh, that you can, uh, you can do. But then at the end, the paint just kind of flows in a way that it does. So we have, uh, we have a bit of control over the process, but just uh, a little bit. And we need to uh, be able to kind of enjoy uh, watching the paints uh, play with each other, watching the flow. Um, and then when we see the result, like whatever you do with paint pouring, it always turns out amazing, but it's never what you expected. Uh, so when you finished with your painting, you realize that uh, you don't have to control everything in order to create something beautiful. Uh, you just need to be in the moment, be in the process and enjoy uh, exactly what it is that's happening here and connect to the colors and just have fun with it. Um, and then like it kind of uh, paint for improves to us that uh, by letting go of the end result, by letting go of the control uh, of what's going to happen at the end, uh, we create something amazing and we are in the flow of creativity. We connect it to the universe, we're connected to the flow of life. Uh, so um, I invite you all to give it a try, to give a try to paint pouring and uh, see for yourself how easy it is to let go with this medium. And once you learn to let go in paint pouring, um, I can promise you that it's going to be easier to let go of a lot of things in life. So let's start with paint pouring itself. So at first I wanted to show you a few of the paintings that I have already done and I will show you uh, maybe two or three different techniques that I can use, uh, that you can use to create those paintings. So uh, the very simple one would be a, a flip cup, it's like the easiest thing ever. And this is the kind of painting that kind of comes out um, when you do the flip cup. So this is one of my flip cup paintings, so just kind of a few different colors. and just allowing them to flow. Uh, this is another one that I've done. I never know which way is up, which way is down, which is kind of cool as well. So this is another one that I've done with a couple different uh, colors and then there's kind of a, a flow in between as well. Um, and yeah, the fun thing about paint pouring is like, it is all abstract. So uh, you can see something different when you hold it this way, when you hold it this way. So I hope it's focusing there for you. Um, so after the painting is finished, you can decide which way it goes up. And sometimes you can see things in the painting, uh, like maybe a shape comes out or uh, you know a little figure comes out and then you can use paint pouring a, a picture as a background. So it doesn't have to be uh, left the way it is. And you can use it as a background and add other things to it. So I'll show you that in a minute as well. So this is another one of uh, flip cups. Like it is amazing what comes out uh, and I have not expected that's what's going to come out when I was working with it. So this is flip cup. Uh, the other technique is uh, a swipe. Now swipe is a bit harder, so it took me a while to kind of get it working. And swipe is nice when you do it on long canvas. So if you have a long canvas, there is always a bit of a, a background color, white or black left, and you can put it this way or this way. Um, so swipe technique, I'm going to show that to you as well. And this is another swipe uh, with black background. So you get to decide what it is after it's finished and how you're going to put it up on the wall. I think if you go like this, it looks, uh, I like it this way. So, but you can choose what happens. Uh, this is one of my favorite paintings that I've done recently. Uh, it's it has used um, I used two different flip cups just to create uh, two different uh, landscapes. To me, this is uh, this is a landscape. Uh, actually, I think we can go either this way. If we go this way, this is kind of like the sea, and then we have uh, a little landscape there on top. Or if we go this way, 
we have landscape here and the sky. So lots of different options with paint pouring paintings. Uh, and another thing that uh, it's not as easy, but it's really fun is uh, using a string pull. So I will show that to you as well. So when we do the string pull, you can create flowers like this in the background. Um, and this is another one, another string pull. So I think uh, if we have enough time, we'll do those three techniques today. Um, maybe if you are home and you have your supplies with you, maybe you can, uh, you can create paintings as I show you. Uh, if you don't, just come back to this video. It's going to be on Vedic Art Ireland website and on Mind Body Experience online website uh, as well. So you can come back to it and then just kind of follow the instructions and create some of your own paintings. So I'm just going to put this away because I don't want them to get messed up and uh, paint pouring gets really messy. Uh, oh, I wanted to show you one more painting. So this is when I use a paint pouring uh, background. So there was a background that I've done. Uh, and then I just added a lovely tree into the background. Uh, or you can do it the other way around. I had the, the other one is a uh, kind of large, so I'm not going to show it to you right now. But you can use, you can kind of do background with paints around so the, the paint pour, and then paint pour can be in the middle, creating part of the, paper, the picture. So, okay, so paint pouring. Uh, first of all, uh, what you need is clothes that you are not afraid to mess up, because paint pouring is really messy. So make sure, like I have my painting clothes, so I don't worry uh, about getting them dirty. Uh, get some gloves, uh, because uh, the way well, we use, we mix different media in paint pouring, so it can be uh, quite sticky to your hands and it's hard to uh, get off your hands. So uh, use gloves for paint pouring. So I'm just going to put mine on. And um, yeah, sometimes if I for forget to use the gloves, I just, uh, I can do my other job, uh, which uses hands, and uh, then they're all covering paint. So when you have your gloves, when you have clothes that you're not afraid to mess up, what you need is acrylic paints. So I have, uh, I have loads of different colors. I use uh, uh, either Sostern Green brand because they have lovely colors um, and they're not expensive. Uh, so Sostern Green can be found in Dublin in three locations, I think, and, um, or Icon. Uh, which can be find, found in Mr. Price. Um, now there's different media that you can use for paint pouring, uh, like you can use a pouring medium, but it's quite expensive. So if you're just starting out as uh, trying how it's going to work, uh, don't get the expensive pouring medium because uh, there's going to be a lot of trial and error. So what you're going to use instead of a pouring medium is craft glue, hobby glue, just plain PVA glue. And this one can be found in uh, any of the Euro shops. Uh, I get this one in Mr. Price because uh, I love Mr. Price. They have, they have like loads of cool uh, creative stuff. So um, we have acrylic paints, we have PVA, and the other important thing is silicone oil. So silicone oil is what helps you to create those lovely cells. Okay, now I think now it's clear. So I found this silicone oil in uh, uh, Sostern Green, but before they actually started having paint pouring supplies, what I would get, just uh, silicone oil in uh, uh, one of the motor shops for the car. So you can use this as well, but this is in a spray. So if you just use the spray, there's going to be too many cells. So you can just spray it into uh, just a little plastic bottle and let it settle down. Um, okay. So uh, yes, you have your paints. I'm going to show you how to, um, the mixing ratios first. And um, now I myself, like what I do, I prepare my uh, mixes in advance. So then whenever I feel creative, I can just go for my paints that are already mixed. So I have just uh, bottles with different colors here. Um, and I just keep them and just kind of shake them a little bit before I start doing my painting. Um, but I am going to show you how uh, how to mix your paints in order to uh, get them to be flowy. Uh, so what you need is clear plastic cup. Uh, it's good if it's clear because then you can see how much of uh, each thing you have put into the mix. 
So let's see which color we're going to use. Uh, let me see what color I don't have in there. Okay, I like this blue. So uh, maybe I'm just going to put this down a bit. There we go. So you can see, you can see me mixing things. Uh, so get a plastic cup. Uh, it's good to have lollipop sticks or uh, I don't know uh, sushi kind of Chinese eating sticks as well. I don't remember what you call them, but something to uh, mix your mix. Uh, so I have my paint, I have my glue. Uh, I don't see if it's uh, clear enough. Yeah, and a jug with water. So that's all we need to mix your paints. And then uh, the ratio, that's something that took me a while to figure out in order to make sure that the paints are flowy enough. So the consistency that you're looking for is uh, kind of like uh, cream fresh. Uh, so flowy, but not too watery. Uh, it's kind of, a, it will take a little bit of time to figure out because every paint is, uh, every paint brand is different. Uh, so uh, I will use uh, less water for this one and more water for this one. So you'll have to see uh, which paints you're working with, but the, uh, the ratio I'm going to give you is uh, you mix glue and paint half and half and then start adding water to create the flowy consistency. Uh, so the way it comes out with this paint is usually one third of a cup that's paint, one third of the cup uh, of glue and almost another third of, of water. But um, Let's see how that's going to come out. Now mixing paints is uh, part of the process itself because it teaches you to just be in the moment. It can be very meditative. Um, and when you choose your colors that you work with, uh, choose the colors that you like. So you can actually start connecting with the colors when you're mixing them. Um, we're just going to mix one color because it takes a while. So let's say we have uh, that much of paint and the same amount of glue so when you're using a clear cup you can see that it's the same amount and then we start adding water so I'll just add a little water at a time and just make th mixing things up so that mixing um, I'll tell you like when I um, I pre-made my uh, my colors because uh, if I want to uh, mix, let's say, five, six different colors, uh, it will take maybe 40 minutes, an hour. So I prefer to do it uh, in advance and I, uh, I have maybe 10, 12 colors ready there. Um, I just put some nice music on and use it as a part of a meditation process. I like having a, I like doing kind of active, medi active meditation uh, and this is part uh, like this it works really well as an active meditation so uh, we need to make sure that all of the glue is mixed in with the paint and again on the clear cup you can see that there is a little bit glue on the side there so that's why it's good to use clear cups and that's still a bit thick so we will add a bit more water and you just keep going with colors this way so uh, adding water, mixing it, listening to the music, looking at the beautiful, beautiful color. And make sure to go all the way to the bottom because the uh, water is lighter than the glue and paint. So make sure that you get all of the paint from the bottom. Uh, and the reason I put the paint in first into the cup is that uh, glue is thicker than paint. So if you put the glue in first, uh, then it will be really hard to mix it. So put paint first, then glue, and then water. Okay, see like on the bottom there's still a few little bits that have not been mixed up. Yeah, I really love this color. So um, when you're choosing colors for your paint pour, uh, don't choose too many for one painting because then it can become really messy. Um, I recommend maybe using three or four colors and then using a base color. So the base color would be white or black uh, because then all the other colors can show up really nicely. 
so white or black as a base color and uh, the difference in mixing is uh, that for the colors that you're using you're going to add silicone oil now for the base colors you do not add oil you do not add silicone and um, the base kind of acts as uh, just as a background and it doesn't create any cells now the colors will create cells So see, we're already mixing for maybe five minutes. And then, um, yeah, I think it's good enough. Now, if the mix is too watery, you can thicken it by adding just a tiny bit of glue. If, you, uh, if it happens that it becomes too, too watery, just add a tiny, tiny bit more glue. But I think this is, this is kind of good enough. So make sure to check. Just check with your stick, you know, if it's slowing nicely. Okay. So I think we have this color ready. And um, so, yeah, the main colors that you use, you add two or three drops of silicone oil into the mix not more just two or three drops so we only have half a cup here so i'm just going to put two drops of silicone oil and just mix it make sure that the oil is nicely mixed in I think the consistency is good. So you're going to do this with each of your colors and just remember the main colors, you're going to use two or three drops of silicone oil. For your base colors, white or black, do not use silicone oil, but the mixing ratios are the same. So once you have all of your colors, uh, you decide which technique you're going to do. So we're going to start with, uh, uh, with flip cup because it's easy. Now, um, I have my table covered with plastic and also I have like an old board that I use because uh, the paintboard just kind of goes around. But another way to make sure to keep it safe if your canvas is small is to get yourself a baking tray. So there's a baking tray and, and I think this is like a, a dish rack uh, that I found. Again, with Mr. Price, like I love all of the Euro shops because you can get great supplies there. Uh, so this one has been used a lot and there's a lot of like old paint there but if you use this uh, it's going to be easier not to be messy um, so yeah you have your uh, you have your baking tray uh, you can also use uh, old dish rack I have this one and I'm going to use this just upside down uh, when I do the, uh, the swipe because for the swipe we're going to use a uh, longer canvas but for now, I have a little tiny canvas uh, just here. So we're going to use this for the flip cup. Um, I think I got this one in Tiger. Tiger has really good and cheap supplies as well. So if you want to just play around, uh, don't pay too much for supplies. Um, so yes, we have our canvas. Now for the flip cup, what you're going to do is use another large cup. Uh, just a bit bigger than what you have here because you're going to put a lot of uh, different colors here okay and what we're going to start with is our uh, base color so I think we're going to use black so this is my black so you start by la layering colors into your cup so we put base color there and again like um, um, I don't use uh, I don't measure things I don't measure paints as I use them I just kind of uh, uh, see as it goes and it's better to have a bit more paint and less because if you have not enough paint to cover the whole canvas um, uh, the, the background like the canvas is just going to show through and you will not see beautiful cells so it's better to use a tiny bit more um, paint than less so this is our base 
so we're going to start with black and I'm going to use this beautiful blue so just put the blue on top slowly I think that's good enough now make sure you have a lot of paper as well because it does get messy and what other colors can we use uh, blue maybe we'll do yellow so I have a bit of yellow there bright pink there we go so we have background and three colors so I think that's going to be good enough and you can uh, take a look in the cup as well sorry uh, there we go so you can see there's already cells forming in a cup so that's going to be interesting and flip cup is really easy so what you're going to do is you're going to take your canvas put it on top of your cup make make sure that it's uh, there is no holes in between the surfaces right and you're going to exactly flip it so we flip the cup and we just leave it here for a few moments I want to make sure that you can see it really well, so I'm just going to lower this. So you allow all the paint to just flow onto the surface. And then when you're ready, you quickly remove the cap and see what happens. And it's good to just kind of allow the paint to go over the sides a little bit. Just make sure you cover all the corners. Now do not touch the surface because if you touch the surface, the cells are going to disappear. There we go. You can touch the sides a little bit to make sure there is no white. Okay, so this is what it looks like right now. Okay, I want to make sure that you can see it. So I'm just going to move it a bit closer. And then if you just leave it, now it has to be flat. If you just leave it, the cells are going to start forming on the surface. And messy hands. to see if I can move the camera a bit so you're looking at it from the right angle. Now you don't have to see me anymore. You just need to see the painting. And there we go. So the cells are forming more on this corner. Now with paint pouring, it takes uh, it takes a long time for the paint to dry, um, about two to three days, depending how much uh, how much paint you have used or how long, how large is the surface. So that's why I always recommend having a little tray uh, where you can leave uh, the paintings to dry. So the cells are forming there by themselves. So what you can do, you can just leave it uh, and see what happens. Or there's another tool that we use. Uh, this is a kitchen torch. Uh, the kind of torch we use for making creme brulee. So you can get it at any of the um, homeware stores. Um, now I'm not sure if mine is going to work. Like I chopped it up with uh, wood gas, but like it doesn't always work. So if you don't have a kitchen torch, you can use a hair dryer. And uh, by using heat, you can, uh, you can create more cells. So we're going to give it a try. Okay, so kitchen torch is working. And I just want to make sure that you can see it. 
So we add a bit more to it. You can see more cells coming to the surface. Now don't put the, uh, the heat too close because then you can burn through the, uh, th through the uh, paint and through the canvas. And there's more cells forming there. So we can just uh, leave it this way and we'll see what happens. Uh, we're going to come back to this painting when we finish the presentation and you'll see what it looks like at the end. But this is flip cup. So it's very easy um, if you want to start uh, start your paint pouring journey with something simple, use the flip cup. So we're going to put this away and let me see, I'm just going to put this to the side and for that I have more, <laughs> more baking trays and, and the reason I use baking trays is because there is glue on the painting so it's very sticky so if you put it on uh, paper, then the paper uh, that the painting is drying on is going to get stuck uh, to the painting and it's hard to get it off. So we're going to leave this painting there. We've done, a, we've done a flip cup. Now what we're going to do next, we're going to do a string pull. So for string pull, uh, we basically do another flip cup background. Just use maybe two colors, don't use too many colors for, uh, for the background. So we're just going to do a little flip cup background for the string pool. Now I'll give you guys a couple minutes to get ready, so just get back on this. And uh, so again, you need the cup and you need a, a piece of string. Like I think this is, uh, this is a thread, uh, something I found in the shop. So we're going to do a background first, and for this one, I want to use a white background. Actually, we're not going to do a flip cup. We're going to do something else because I want you to see the tree, tree ring uh, pour as well. So the tree ring is going to be used as a background for a string pull. So we'll use white at the bottom. So the base color doesn't have silicone oil. Okay, we'll use our lovely blue. And just take a look at the cells forming there already. And what other color should we use? Something light. So, um, purple. Let's use purple. So white, blue, purple. Okay. And maybe we'll use a little bit of silver. Now it's nice to have uh, those reflective colors as well in your pour because then they shine really nicely once the painting is dry. I just use a tiny bit of silver. I want you guys to see the colors. There we go. Okay, so we're just going to do a true ring background first and then we're going to use the string pull. So for the tree ring, you just flip the cup lightly, okay? And starting from the middle, you just allow the paint to pour out slowly, just making little circles all around. to the corners and just allow the paint to flow 
out a tiny bit to cover the corners. What is it called a tree ring? I'll show you in a minute. I'll just move the camera a tiny bit closer. I hope not to drop it again. I'll do my best. So it's called a tree ring because it looks as though you cut a tree in the middle. So that's the tree ring pour. Again, very simple. There we go. So what you can do, you can leave it this way and then you have your tree ring pour. You can use your torch or a hair dryer uh, to create more cells, but because we're doing, a, we're doing a string pull, I don't want to change the background. I don't want to add too many cells. So we'll leave it the way it is. And then how do we pull the string? So it's good to have a little container there. Uh, just any plastic containers. I reuse everything, so uh, if I get, uh, like, I think this is from my dog's too. And then you use uh, one of your base colors, so either black or white, but because the background there is uh, has some white, I'm going to use the black. And just pour a little bit of black into your plastic container. And then put your string into it. Make sure you cover the string with the black color. So getting some of the paint on to the string, right? And just separating the string there. So leaving a little bit of paint on it. But it cannot be dripping because it's going to drip onto your background. And what we're going to do now is very gently do a little zigzag with the string on your still wet background. Okay. So just put the string there. Like so. A little zigzag there and we end by doing a little straight line and then we pull. There we go and we have a little flower forming there but I'm going to do another one. So getting more paint onto the string and be careful not to get any knots on your string as I just did. Okay. okay. So we do a little another little zigzag there and pull. And we'll do another little zigzag there. And pull. And you can do a few of those if you like. So we'll do another one here. And I think I want to do the middle one again because as I have said, like with paint pouring, the paint kind of moves. So even though you had something at the beginning, it may disappear. I'm just going to go over this again, just a little bit. There we go. Okay. So this is a string pull. And I'm just going to wipe my hands and show this closer what it looks like right now, but it's going to change. As I 
said, like paint pouring always changes, always moves. So we have a couple of flowers there. But what we're going to do is use that torch now to create some cells just around the flower. So I want to leave the, uh, the stems there of the flowers and just do a little few bubbles here and there. Just on the top, I don't want to touch the stems. There we go. I think I'm gonna leave it this way. So again, I'll get this closer for you guys to look. There we go. So with the string pull, there we go. You can do all, uh, all different kinds of flowers and uh, use more colors and anyways. So this is it right now. And I'm going to put it to the side to dry. And we'll see what it looks like later on. So there is an abundance of trays here. And I'm just going to put it to the side to dry. There we go. Right. So we've done uh, two different techniques and I, show, I want to show you the third one, which is the swipe. And this one um, is the hardest one that I have, uh, I have found so far. Well, there's some other more complicated ones, but I haven't, uh, I don't think I want to show them to you just yet because it may be too overwhelming. But we're going to do the swipe. So for the swipe, because I have a... I have a long canvas. I like to use um, just dish rack upside down and just to make sure that it's parallel to the ground. So this one is really cool. So I use long canvas for the swipe. And what else you need for the swipe is just something uh, like some people use plastic sheet, I like to use, uh, I don't even know what it is, I think it was uh, part of the package of something I bought. So this is a piece of plastic and then I can wipe it off and reuse it again and again. So it's not very thick, it's kind of thin, but it's flat. So we're going to do the, um, the swipe now. So now for the swipe, we're not using a cup anymore. We use uh, we use the paints separately, so we don't put them all together in the cup. And we start with our colors. So I want to finish using this blue color that we started with. So you can again, you can choose a few more colors for this. Uh, maybe five or six. And what we're going to do, we're going to do little zigzags on the canvas. Now leave the sides, uh, leave the sides untouched because the sides we're going to use for the uh, base color. So just starting with your color, just doing little zigzags. There we go. So the blue color is gone. And what other colors should we use? Okay, I have dark blue. I kind of feel blue and purpley today. And then create another zigzag just around the one that you've done. And be generous with the paint. And this way we're going to Fill up the canvas with your colors. Um, I'm going to use this one. Maybe something for the colors. 
contrast orange no uh, oh, we'll do a dark purple so now we have few zigzags and we're just going to fill up those few empty spaces there I think we need another light color so we can use nice pink just going to put the pink in those empty spaces there As you see, there is nothing happening yet. And then we use our base color. And I'm going to use black because I can't seem to find white paint anywhere in the stores. I'll drop something there. Black and white paint have been sold out throughout the lockdown. Okay, so now we use our base color and you basically go around the colors that you already put on your canvas. Now that doesn't seem to be leveled because it's going to the side there. So make sure to get enough of your base color to go all the way to the edges. Right? As you can see this one is really messy okay I need to make sure you don't get the paint all the way there time to swipe but uh, the, the the side of the painting you're going to start the swiping from it needs to have a little bit of excess base paint there we go okay and the swipe itself you need to be very very gentle with it so it's uh, you just touch your swipe piece or whatever you call it swipe tool to the side and gently flipping you're going to be pulling the paint in a zigzag motion so make sure that it's touching the surface but you're not pressing too hard okay Check this out. Now there's cells forming already. We don't need any anything extra here. We don't need to heat it up because with the swipe, the cells are just showing up on their own. Just take a look here. just popping on the surface on their own and I find it so magical like this is so cool it's like the coolest uh, coolest thing that I've seen okay so while we're waiting for the 
cells to show up just need to make sure that the sides are covered so you can use the excess paint that was just there just kind of dripped off to cover the sides This white painting you can just leave it and see what cells are going to show up and it may take you know it may, the painting may change in the next uh, 10 15 30 minutes or you can move it a bit and just allow some things to drip make the cells a bit wider and keep the color that you like. There we go. I kind of like it this way. Now, there is a lot of paint here, so I don't want to move it too much, but that's what it looks like right now. So I can just leave it to dry. Or I think I may want a few more cells. So maybe I'll use my torch just a little bit in a few spots. see what happens. Now if you put, uh, if you use the torch a bit too much, you can have those empty spaces there. You're not supposed to touch the surface because then you destroy the cells. But I can see there's a couple of places there that has no paint at all. So I'm just going to leave it there. And we'll see what happens after a couple hours. Uh, I'm going to have to let it dry for, uh, for a few hours. And I think maybe I'll post the pictures on the page or in the comments. I don't know if I can post pictures in the comments on the live video, but I'll see. Uh, and that way you can see what the painting is going to look like after a few hours. So this is the first painting that we did. And this is what it looks like right now. So it's still drying, so it may still change. And the second painting that we did with the string pull, as you can see, We've done, uh, uh, I was trying to do a few uh, flowers, but it has moved, so the flowers are gone. And this is the swipe, which is still very wet. Well, there's a few nice places there. Okay, so back to me. I'm not going to put this. Uh, onto the um, onto the uh, tripod anymore because I'm going to drop the phone again um, so yeah those are a few a uh, few of the techniques I wanted to show with you guys and I think you can see uh, why we call it that call it the art of letting go why I call it the art of letting go because uh, if you I, I intended to do uh, flowers for example in the um, string pool and they just didn't show up uh, they showed up at the beginning, but then the paint moved and they're gone. So what I can do now, I could get frustrated that it didn't come out the way I wanted to, or I can uh, I can accept the fact that this is uh, the way the paint works. This is the paint pour, and that's where the paint wanted to go. So I'm going to leave it the way it is. I'm going to let it dry. I'm going to see how the paint is going to move in the next few hours as it dries. And uh, later on, I'm going to look at the result and I'm going to appreciate uh, what I've done 
during the process uh, of creating this painting. A uh, big part of this process today was showing you how to do different techniques. So uh, I am satisfied with the process. I am really happy by, uh, from the fact that I was playing with the colors uh, and I will be happy with the result, uh, whatever it is, whatever is going to come to be. So uh, I cannot show you the end result yet, but I'll, I'm going to post. Uh, I'm going to post the pictures either on Vedic Art uh, Ireland page or under the comments uh, in this video if I can. We'll see. So I hope that you enjoyed this presentation. This is all done in uh, in my uh, home environment, so it's not a professional studio, but you can create a little um, art area for yourself in your home as well. Just make sure to cover everything because. Uh, <laughs> Well, maybe I will show you what it looks like. So this is around the table there where I was doing paint pouring. So if I, if I didn't have it covered, it would be all over my table, all over my floor. Uh, so make sure you cover the surface that you're working on and get some cheap paints, uh, get some PVA glue. Um, like everything that I've showed you, this is uh, it's all uh, simple supplies, not expensive supplies, and everyone can uh, give it a try and, uh, and just have fun with it. I mean, have fun with it, guys. Creativity is all about uh, having fun and figuring out uh, uh, what it is that you want to express, what, it's, what it is that you like to do, what makes, uh, what makes your inner child smile. Have fun with it. Enjoy it. So um, this is all for today. Now, if you want to find out... Uh, okay, no, that's a bit shaky. I'm just going to put it here. Now, if you want to find out uh, a bit more about uh, other courses that I'm doing, you can go to uh, www.vedicart.ie. So you can read about Vedic art courses. Uh, those courses are a bit longer than paint pouring. Um, you can go to, uh, to YouTube. There is a link on my, on my website to my YouTube channel. There's a lot of videos of uh, doing other paint pours or uh, some other talks that I've done. Uh, and you can also find me on my therapy website, which is laureliidali.com. So uh, thank you all for watching today. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed it and I will speak to you soon. Bye.